Kempire is brought to you by. We are so excited to announce that the Kempire After Dark A Live Tour is coming back. We are first returning to Los Angeles on November 20th at the Bourbon Room. And then we will be in London. Yes, the first international date of the Kempire After Dark Live Experience is coming to London, of course, because this is where it all began at our first meet and greet. On December 8th, we will be at Neon 194. This live show is presented by our friends over at AEG. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, already what are you waiting for december is right around the corner every campfire after dark live experience is so different than the, the than the other so make a trip or if you live in london come to the campfire after dark live experience and just announce washington dc we're coming back we're coming back yes we're coming back to union stage washington dc come out get your tickets are now available let's sell out all three shows for 2024 and the early part of 2025. We'll be in D.C. on January 24th. More information on all tour dates will be available in the description. I'll see you guys soon. You're listening to Kempire here on the Kempire Radio Network. Mm, 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 mm. Howdy. Hey. Apologies, 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 apologies. Sorry for my tardiness. Sorry, sorry for being tardy for the party. Let me see if I can move this just a tad. Look, look. It's a live show. I just like to center myself just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Guys, welcome back to the Kempire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. This is our weekly recap of the Real Housewives of Potomac. So if you haven't already, be sure to like the video. Shout out to all of you that are here. Be sure to let me know if this is your first time watching us live or your first time being a part of our Real Housewives of Potomac recap. I do have a couple of other stories that I want to talk about before we get into our Real Housewives of Potomac recap. All right, so be sure to like the video. Be sure to share the video. Be sure to subscribe because it is only a subscribers only live chat. There we go. More than one only in a sentence. <laughs> thank you, Taz. Look, t- thank you, Tasman. Tasman says, You're not that late, Kemp. It's all good. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. We appreciate it. Thank you. Look, oh, you guys are loving on me today. <laughs> Kalab says, It's okay, Campire. It's your show. We all just sitting on ready. I love it. I love it. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you all being here for our recap. I want to have a good time. If you missed it yesterday, we had such a good time recapping Love and Marriage Huntsville. And not because the episode was that great. It's just that we were kikiing it during that live. I had so much fun. You guys make doing these recaps so much fun. Even if the the episode is trash. And I'm not saying that about Potomac. But as long as we have a good time, that's all that matters to me. Happy Monday. Please take note of what you can be grateful for today. I know we don't do our Tuesday takeover right now. I'm not going to say any more. We're going to get back to Tuesday takeover. Let me just figure out my schedule. Now I'm going on tour. I'm going I'm going to L.A. November 20th. Then I'm in London December 8th. And then I'm back to D.C. on January 24th. Tickets in the description. If you haven't gotten your tickets, especially in D.C. D.C., you always show out. I appreciate you, D.C., DMV area, Merlin. I appreciate you guys. You always show out. There's already a ticket, a low ticket alert on the meet and greets. Okay? Go get your tickets today if you haven't. You don't want to wait till January. You're going to be outside the club. (laughs) You're going to be outside the club. Anyways, let's get into our recap of the Housewives of uh, Potomac. First of all, Tomorrow is election day. Come on. <laughs> Tomorrow is election day. Have you voted yet? Have you voted yet? I want to know. Early voting ended yesterday here in New York City, but tomorrow is officially election day. So if you know your rights, first of all, your employer has to allow you time to go vote. So go vote. Make your, I, know, I know people are going to say, well, I don't like either one. I can't. Go make your voice heard. Not only do you have to vote about this presidential election, there are ballots on, there are there are policies and things that are being made in your local cities and states that need your voice. There are local elections that are happening that, that need your voice. Go and check them out. They are betting on you not voting. Okay? Literally, that was in J-Lo's speech this past weekend. She was just like, 
she's been in I see did did anyone's ears perk up when JLo said I've been in the rooms with these powerful people I was like JLo are you ready to tell are you ready to talk about Diddy <laughs> and she says they are counting on you not showing up and I was like I mean ain't no ain't no lie there so go make your voice heard and vote okay because I don't want to hear you complaining later okay damn it come on All right. And you can check your voter registration at vote.org. Vote.org. Okay. Go vote tomorrow. All right. And we probably will be doing an election party tomorrow evening here exclusively on YouTube. So if you're not following me on YouTube, you're going to miss out. TikTok, Twitch, Twitter, those watching on Facebook. Okay. I do want to say rest in peace to Quincy Jones. Oh, that's not Quincy Jones. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Rest in peace to Quincy Jones. First of all, I woke up to this news this morning. Uh, Very, very sad news. This man is an icon in the industry. Not only did he dominate in music, being being one of the masterminds behind Michael Jackson's thriller, he dominated in movies. One of my favorite movies of all time, if you were here for our Love and Marriage Huntsville recap, I literally was singing, Sister, you've been on my mind. From The Color Purple, the first one, the original, that had 12 Oscar nominations, didn't win one. I don't know how that was possible, but you know, politics. And he was behind the TV show Prince of Bel-Air and so many other things. I'm just giving you some of the highlights of Quincy Jones' legacy. This morning, his family confirmed that he had passed away at his home in Bel-Air. Bel-Air. At 91 years old. 91 years old. Definitely a legend. Rest in peace to Quincy Jones. Okay? Another story that I wanted to talk about, Cynthia Bailey. (laughs) So Cynthia Bailey is telling this story this past week. I forgot, it was like an interview or something like that. She was talking, and she talked talked about getting ghosted by Lenny Kravitz. Cynthia, you probably should be happy that he ghosted you. He's on a celibacy journey, and I don't see you being down for that. But let me tell you what Page Six is reporting. So, Page Six says, all he wanted to do was fly your way. Remember that song? (laughs) Cynthia Bailey revealed that she was ghosted by the none other than Lenny Kravitz after the rocker asked for her phone number at a party last year. During an appearance on Two T's in a Podcast, mm -mm. (laughs) the Real Housewives of Atlanta alum, who is returning to the franchise as a friend of for season 16, detailed her short-lived encounter with the four-time Grammy winner. They said the Bravo celebrity, who's 57, told the host, Teddy Mellencamp, who sidebar, te- Teddy just revealed that she's announced she's getting a divorce from her husband. And we all said, okay, that she met the legendary rocker who's 60 at Mick Jagger's 80th birthday party in London, July of 2023. This is when she was hanging out with Sutton. Okay, at the star-studded bash, Kravis asked Mick Jagger's 37-year-old fiance, Melanie Hamrick, for Bailey's number, but ultimately never hit her up. First of all, that feels, I mean, unless he forgot to ask Cynthia her number, that feels so immature. That feels so immature. to You were this big-time rocker. I mean, you gr- let's put the celebrity part aside. You are 60 years old. You are a grown man, (laughs) because kids be listening. You're grown. Why are you asking this 37-year-old woman (laughs) for Cynthia Bailey's number? Unless he he was so caught up in the conversation because Cynthia Bailey is stunning in person. She's stunning in person. So I can see you getting conflummoxed and just like, damn, I forgot to ask for her number. So I could see that. Maybe. So at the Star Studded Bash, Kravitz asked Mick, Mick Jagger's 37-year-old, Mick Jagger's 37-year-old fiance, Melanie ha- Hamrick, for Bailey's number, but ultimately never hit her up, she said. She says, I didn't really feel any sparks, she said about Kravitz, but added that she tried to play it, quote, really cool. She says, he was really nice. He didn't seem overly interested or anything. I think Lenny's just very laid back. Mellencamp then asked the reality star if Kravitz had asked for anyone else's number at the party. She says, that I don't know. Apparently so, he didn't use my damn number. Speaking in May, Kravitz revealed that he hasn't been in a serious relationship for nine years, adding that he plans to remain celibate for the time being. He says that it's a spiritual thing, he told The Guardian, before acknowledging that he might 
not ever find that stability. I've become very set in my ways the way I live. Do you think that he probably was like, Cynthia's too tam- too damn tempting? So he was like, I'm not going to call her. Or have you ever asked for a number and you're just like, yeah, I'm not going to call her. But Cynthia said that she didn't feel a spark between them. But why ask for the number? Why ask for the number? All right. I mean, they, that would be a sexy couple, though. Let's be honest. Cynthia Bailey and Lenny Kravitz, that would be a sexy couple. But he said that he's celibate. Oh, <laughs> Ms. Brooklyn. Hey, Ms. Brooklyn. Ms. Brooklyn says, according to who did he ask for the number? Two sides to each story. You're right. Look, you're right. I just find it interesting. If, if she didn't feel a spark and he didn't necessarily seem like he was interested, I also feel like Lenny Kravitz gives the energy that he's very laid back. So I, I just couldn't imagine him being like, maybe maybe Cynthia is so used to men being like, oh, 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 oh. even the gay boys be like, oh, 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 you know, for Cynthia. She's gorgeous. And she's, she's tall and she's stunning in person. So maybe she's used to that. And that's, what, that's not what Lenny Kravitz was giving. Because, you know, L- Lenny said, you know, the celibacy journey has really done a lot of things for him. And I said, well, maybe we all should consider it. No? <laughs> no? no, Oh, okay. <laughs> Mia says, Cynthia's a little dry for Lenny. I mean, we're in the middle of talking about celibacy and you're talking about somebody being dry. Stop it! <laughs> uh, y- y'all, y- y'all starting. Y'all are starting. I'm starting? Okay, fine. Anyways, I, I saw that story. I wanted to mention it because I know later on I might forget about it. And Real Housewives of Atlanta is not currently on. I am enjoying, they're not paying me to promote this because then you know I'm really interested in it. I have to say, I really do enjoy her new podcast with Christine, uh, Christine, Crystal Kung Minkoff. Damn, I don't even know her name. Oh my goodness. Anyways, before we get into our Real Housewives of Potomac recap, I do want to say thank you to Uncommon Goods. The holiday season is right around the corner. So today's live recap of the Real Housewives of Potomac is brought to you by our friends over at Uncommon Goods. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts that spark joy, wonder, delight, and that it's exactly what I wanted feeling. They scour the globe for original, handmade, absolutely remarkable things. Some, somehow, they know exactly the perfect gift for every single person you know. You already saw my gift. Look, I, and, I, and I charged it up, y'all. Hold on. <sighs> Look, and I, ooh, and I charged it up. I got a little a little knickknack for my desk. Just a little look, just a little knickknack for my desk. Is it lit up? Oh, you can't like oh wait. Anyways, there's just so many different things. There's so many different price points. And what I love is that they celebrate and support independent small businesses. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash kempire. That's uncommongoods.com slash kempire for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. That's Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. So, speaking out of the ordinary, let's talk about Mia Thornton. (laughs) Before we get into the recap, Mia Thornton has unfollowed that little man. Oh, damn. What's his name? Ink. Okay? That's the word on the street. She's unfollowed the little man. Damn. Ink. (laughs) Did you guys see the Watch What Happens Live game game that they were playing? How many celebrities are under the the height of 5'9"? First of all, 5'9 is not that short as someone that's 5'10". <laughs> Just saying. But I thought that was interesting. Word on the street is they've unfollowed each other. Are we shocked? No. Mia be lying and have us out here thinking that they have the most perfect relationship. And yes, they've been through some things. They've, they've, they used to date back back in the day. I think she just... Mia, I need to know how you're even making your money now. Mia, in this episode alone, said that she is self, she's a self-made millionaire. Mia be lying. She's no millionaire. Mia, how are you making your money now? You got kicked out of the business. How are you making your money now? I need to know. Because we talk about this with other housewives, and we're like, like Bryn from Real Housewives of New York. Sidebar, Mia says, you know, she's trying to watch New York City. They're canceling that mother father. They're canceling that mother father just like Dubai. I mean, <laughs> They are canceling that mother father because every housewife that has come on Watch What Happens Live and they've asked, so, you know, are you watching New York? 
I fell asleep. Mary Cosby, I fell asleep on it. Mia's is like, I'm trying to get into it. The entire world is trying to get into Real Housewives of New York. It's not landing. Start over. <laughs> Look, start over. So last week's episode ended with Mia bringing up the fact that Karen butt dialed them and basically said, those girls think that I'm with Ray. <laughs> like I wanted to, I wanted to know how, how did Karen say it? Did Karen say it? I mean, they said she was drunk. Okay. Those girls think that I'm with Ray blue eyes. Only if, look, look, I know we've been critical of Karen and I'm going to be twerking on this fence, Karen's fence. I'm going to be twerking on my own fence a lot because Mia be lying and Mia is a dangerous person. But I will say this, Karen admitting that she was in the car drunk three years ago. This story is from three years ago. Drunk, but decided to pull over and call her driver because she, we knew Karen was lying. Karen has been lying to us since season one, okay? And I believe there's some sort of understanding between her and Ray. I do believe that there's some sort of understanding. They, not them flashing back to the time when Ray says that he wasn't sure if he was in love with her. And we're supposed to believe that these two are happily married. They might be happy, but they're not, they're not doing the in and the out. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, I love how I slipped this. I slipped that cancellation in there. Anyways. <laughs> so Mia claims, Mia claims that, yeah, she butt dialed them. And her friend was there to confirm it. And her friend was her friend was working overtime to defend Mia. Mia decided to drop this T because she wanted to defend Jacqueline. Do you think that she was really trying to defend Jacqueline? I don't feel, I really don't feel like she was trying to to, to uh, defend Jacqueline. I think she was trying to be a producer in that moment. So Mia claims that she's doing this too because Karen came for, for Jacqueline. She's a, she's a loyal friend to Jacqueline, whatever. But then Mia in her confessional says that Karen drunk called her on her way home the next day. So there are a lot of damning claims. And look, there are two things can be true. I'm concerned that allegedly, we have to say allegedly because we don't know for a fact, even though Karen kind of confirmed it herself, because Karen said herself, I was drunk, I pulled over and called my driver. So she admitted that three years ago, she went behind the wheel drinking. And I'm like, oh, that, that's not great. Especially when you're dealing with a certain situation that's coming up in December when it comes to another nine citations, which include D D U I. So she admits that. And Mia looks like she's trying to help her in that moment. So she's like, oh, she's like, I don't do this. I don't, I don't, you know, I pulled over. I did the, I, I always do the right thing. Okay. So there's a couple of things. Karen was drinking three years ago and went behind the wheel, allegedly pulled over and called her driver. Who was she with? We never got to the bottom of that. We never got to the bottom of who was she with? Those girls think that I'm with Ray. So who were you with? You, oh, your driver. That's what, oh, Okay. All right. But at the same time, I feel like, yes, Mia, you want to come for Karen in defense of your friend. But at the same time, you also realize that she's dealing with a legal situation. So this is getting beyond just a reality show. This could affect her real case. But at the same time, Karen herself admitted on camera that she got behind the wheel and she was drunk. She did say she pulled over, though, and called her driver. Okay, I thought that was interesting. I, that took a turn. That took a turn. I didn't expect that. But apparently the story was from three years ago. Three years ago. So she's been sitting on that. Exactly. Ashley says that, but that was three years ago and Mia brought, brought it now for attention and to be shady. Yeah, I don't believe it was Mia trying to defend Jacqueline. Ja Jacqueline is just her representative. Every scene with Jacqueline and Mia, it's, it's so calculated Clearly, Jacqueline brought Mia brought Jacqueline on the show for that purpose to to be her hype woman. All right, Jacqueline says that Karen wants to take this itty bitty situation. Look, we all saw what Jacqueline said. Should Jacqueline have brought up Karen sounding tipsy on the phone with her to Mia? No. However, I do feel as if Karen's response to Jacqueline's comment is a little over overdone a little exaggerated and i get it karen's in the middle of a legal situation so saying that 
is mm, a little shady, a little could cause harm. However, she didn't say that she was on the phone with Karen and Karen was in the car driving and she sounded tipsy. We have to remember years ago, other women, Ashley, all of them have said Karen has done this. They've called, she's called them drunk, allegedly. Not allegedly, they've said it on the show. I don't know if it's true though, okay? So Jacqueline apparently said that, okay? All right. But Jacqueline says, I feel like what I did to Karen is very small in in response to what, what Karen is doing. And I have to agree with her. I do feel as if Karen's response is a little over the top for what Jacqueline said and did. I do feel like that a level of energy feels a little like, whoa, okay. Like, you could be mad at her, but I don't think that it's something that you guys can't get over. But maybe Karen feels betrayed by Jacqueline. This is why I talk about twerking on the fence. Maybe she feels betrayed by Jacqueline. And especially because Jacqueline's associated with, with Mia. And when Mia was throwing Jacqueline under the bus, Karen was like, I, I've been a friend to you. I was giving advice to you when you called me. So she feels betrayed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Look, twerking on a fence. So then they, 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 they leave the table and they never have their own separate conversation. Um, Mia talks about, talks with Ashley about defending Jacqueline. She's like, you know, I'm going to de- defend my friend. Ashley's like, yeah, you, Jack, you were Jacqueline's MVP. Mia says that Karen admitted that, she's like, you see, Karen admitted that she drove drunk. She says that Karen is going to be calling bloggers now and getting dirt on her. She's like, she's going she's gonna to be calling bloggers. Not for me then going on Twitter and then seeing one of the blogs post some damning, ac- not, it's not damning at all, posted some receipts on Jacqueline's speeding tickets. And I said, wait a minute. Is this what Mia was referring to? Because, look, there's been some, like, there's certain blogs that have gotten a lot of R-H-O-P-T. And I'm like, who's giving this to them? Like, this is a lot of information for one blog, being the only blog to get this information. And that's the same blog that came out with receipts on, on Jacqueline. However, the receipts weren't receding. I'll be honest with you. The receipts basically were speeding tickets that Jacqueline had. So I was sort of like, this is not landing. But then I was like, wait, is this the blog that's been working with Karen? Exactly, exactly. Um, which is this? Here we go again with the bloggers. I, but all these housewives do it. All these housewives do it. So I thought that was interesting when Mia said that. Then all of a sudden, I I open up Twitter and I see that post, and I'm just like, wait, <laughs> is this the blog that that Karen's been in cahoots with? Maybe. Look, like, maybe. So they had their little side conversation. Okay, Stacy calls TJ. Her, you know, her boyfriend, I guess she's referring to him as. Maybe not her boyfriend, because she's still married. All right? But, look, I was making, t- if you follow me on Twitter, you saw, you saw this tweet. So I'm making my tea. I'm making peppermint tea. I'm making my tea. Exactly. J.I., one thing I forgot to mention, the whole conversation of Jacqueline's speeding ticket versus Karen's citations are very, very different. Are very, very different. That's why I was like, this is not landing the way you guys think it's landing. Jacqueline's speeding versus, look, speeding, you shouldn't be speeding either, but drunken, driving under the influence, not great. Stacy calls TJ. So I'm minding my business watching this episode last night making my tea. And I'm like this, making my tea. My back is turned to the television. And all I hear is Carlos King's voice. Carlos. Well, that's what I thought. I was like, what's Carlos doing on RHOP? I turn around and it's TJ. (laughs) I'm sorry, y'all. I turned around and it was TJ. I was like, oh, oh, okay. I, I really thought it was, t- I, if I was not, if I was looking at the, the television, I, I would have known. But I literally, in the, the, that moment, I was like, wait, what is Carlos doing on RHOP? It was TJ. So Stacy FaceTimed TJ. Dr. Wendy came out and, and spoke with him as well. And she's like, oh my God, they're, they're such a like virgin couple. Jassy was out there. I'm liking Jassy. Jassy doesn't get enough credit. She's just a friend of the show. But I'm liking her vibe. And I don't know if Mia and Jassy were really friends. Because even if you watch in this episode, you see Jassy aligning herself with people that aren't Mia. And I was like, oh. Because remember, when, when housewives or friend-ups come on the show, 
producers like, okay, who do you want to come through? Or, you know, there is a tie. You and me have m- maybe met at an event. Okay. So I think that might be what it is. I don't think Mia and Jassy have that close of a relationship. Maybe. Anyways, back to Carlos. I mean, TJ. So TJ's on the phone catching up with her. And she says, you know, we've been talking about you. And he's like, I'm glad. I, I want you to talk talk about me with the girls. I want you to have that camaraderie with the girls about me. And he says he wants her to lean into sharing more info about about him. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I like I I want better for Stacy. And I'm not saying that this man is a terrible person. I just there's something. There's something there. Wendy had a lot to say about them coming across as the virgin couple in, in that FaceTime, but she was very sweet. Wendy was a, a mood at that breakfast breakfast table the next day. Anyways, speaking of Wendy, Wendy, they have a little countdown to Wendy's 40th birthday. The women stay up. Karen was just like, when I celebrated my birthday, my 40th birthday, we were doing a lot more than this. And I get it. I wasn't bored. It was a moment. This episode, if you guys had to rate it from 1 to 10, how would you rate it? I don't I don't think that it was bad. I thought, I, I think that little moment with them waiting for her birthday was a little like, okay, do, 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 do. fine. But they all waited up. This was a, it just actually was a sweet moment. I know some people probably would look at this moment like, is this Wendy's last season? Because it was sort of like a throwback to all of the Wendy's moments. But remember we said that about Ashley last season when they did something similar for Ashley. And here Ashley, unfortunately, is still here. But that's a whole other thing. We'll get to that. Uh, but they they talk about, you know, they show throwbacks of Wendy when she was a kid. They throw, they throw back to Wendy on the show. It was sweet. And she and she reflects on her accomplishments as, as, you know, a professor, as a commentator, as, you know, hosting her, her YouTube re- uh, show. So she, she reflects on all that. Sweet. All right. Mia and Jacqueline go by the pool the next day, and they have a conversation about Gordon, okay? And Gordon apparently texts, first of all, Cyborg, we, we did find out that Gordon has a girlfriend now. So I guess he's eased up on on Mia. But at this particular mo- moment, Gordon's still in his feelings. We also know that Gordon has bipolar disorder. So she says that, you know, there are moments with his mania that she's learning to deal with. But she also says that he's bringing up stuff from like eight, eight, April on IG, a picture with her in ink. So she's talking about that. Jacqueline in her confessional says that Mia is was very spoiled by, by Gordon. And I'm confused. Is Mia spoiled and taken care of by Gordon or is Mia taking care of Gordon? But I always wonder when Mia says that she's taking care of Gordon, I'm like, how are you taking care of Gordon? Off of your Bravo check? That small check? How are you taking care of Gordon? I don't believe her. She also said that she was a self-made millionaire. I'm like, from what? You've been pushed out of this business, so how are you making money now? Like, I'm Mia lies so much that it's hard to even know what is the truth. And I don't believe her. Like, I've, I've been always confused by Mia saying that she's taking care of Gordon. Are you taking care of Gordon because it's money that he has given you? Or you've taken? All right. <laughs> Look, let me play you a clip. Because Giselle, in a recent interview, seems like she's done with Mia. Are they even trying to ice Mia out of the show? Because... Giselle and Karen were here in New York and they went to the Sherry Shepard show. Look, Bravo knows what they're doing. They're painting a new narrative when it comes to Giselle this season. But we aren't falling for it. (laughs) We aren't falling for it. But they know people love Giselle and Karen's frenemy relationship. I honestly, I I watched that interview on Sherry and I was sort of like, why? What are we asking? Like, we need. We need people that are going to ask the questions. Like, it wasn't a fun interview. It was sort of like, okay. I was like, all right, fine. Like, I like their frenemy relationship, but this interview didn't land for me. It felt like this is just publicity. I'm so tired of the same old questions being asked at these interviews. I'm tired of, like, just skating by. We're coming through on the show, and it's like, we're promoting this, and then... And we're best of friends. Like, it's a whole narrative that Bravo wants us to believe. They want to paint a new depiction of Giselle. Fine, but at least make it believable. It's not believable. 
I say all that to say, Giselle said this in another interview while she was here in New York. You'll see she has the same makeup on the and outfit the on that she had when she was on the Sherry Shepard show. Let me play this clip for you. Recently said on a panel that Mia will have the most to answer for at the show's reunion this season. Totally. Could you elaborate on why you agree? Well, Mia does not understand what the word truth is. She Mia just lies about everything. And she's lies to the point where I'm getting bored with it. And I'm getting bored even listening to anything coming out of her mouth. So. Actually recently said on a panel that Mia will have the most to answer for at the show's reunion this season. Totally. Could you elaborate on why you agree? Well, Mia does not understand what the word truth is. She Mia just lies about everything. And she's lies to the point where I'm getting bored with it. And I'm getting bored even listening to anything coming out of her mouth. So there's that. Mm. Look. Say what you want about Giselle, and I wonder what what happens during the season, why Giselle is not feeling her. I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious for us, <laughs> based on what we've been watching in regards to Mia. And look, for a hot second in Mia's first season, the lying was cute. When she was lying about her age, fine. But she's consistently been a liar. And this whole narrative that she is this self-made millionaire, I'm like, a girl... <laughs> self-made millionaire where how who what where when uh look maud it's okay maud i understand why you would fall for it maud says i'm kind of falling for the giselle rebrand here's the thing i'm not completely against the rebrand for giselle but for me it's going to take time like with actual action over over the next couple of seasons but literally, they're pushing out Giselle and Karen as the new faces of Real Housewives of Potomac. That's why you see them going on these shows and doing interviews and things like that together. It didn't land for me. This episode when Giselle FaceTimes Wendy, of all the people, like, we get it. You and Wendy are working on a new relationship. But of all the people that you're going to FaceTime, why would it be Wendy? Like, let's be real. FaceTime Ashley, because you know that's who you really wanted to. But I'm going to give them grace. Maybe Ashley didn't have her phone at, at the table. However, I'm not falling for it. At least make it believable, um, Bravo. At least make it believable, truly original. It's not landing the way that you guys think that it's landing. Just saying. <laughs> Jazz says the rebrand ain't real. <sighs> Hold on and bring this up. Here we go. Well, no, Giselle. Giselle was the the face of the network. A lot of people have said N- not, not, not Karen. And we all said, why not Karen? Michael says, ah, the new faces. They've been the faces. And no, not together. It was always really just Giselle. Like she, she was supposed to be the, the face of, of the show. Justin says, we all know that she's calculated. Ji says, I also got tired of Giselle lying about the relationship with Pastor Holy Whore. Yeah. All right. PR TV. Hey, Giselle says she probably FaceTime her because it was her birthday. No. <laughs> look, look, no. Because you're you're flying there. You're flying there to be with them. It's not like you're not going to be there. Just saying. That's just how I feel. I'm not falling for it. Make it a little bit more convincing. Beyonce. Hey, Beyonce. How you doing, girl? You got time to be watching this recap? <laughs> Beyonce says, the issue here is that they cut out so much of the dinner scene between Giselle and Wendy. So now we're going off that five minute scene that supposedly was longer than that. Yeah, and we talked about that. And Dr. Wendy talked about that in a tweet. She said they talked about a lot more during that conversation. But we have to remember the network and the production edited that down to make the conversation look like it was Giselle getting vindication and not showing the grievances that Dr. Wendy had. So again, Giselle is getting a good edit. Giselle is definitely getting a good edit. (laughs) Beyonce says, well, yes. Well, yes. (laughs) All right, let me move on because there's so much more to talk about. So we had that conversation with Mia and Jacqueline by the pool. Jacqueline says that Mia is very spoiled and she says she needs to make clear boundaries with Gordon. They shouldn't be living so close together. And I'm like, I agree with her, but she has all of this mouth in the confessional, but she doesn't really say this to Mia. She kind of does at the end of their conversation, but she says a lot more in the confessional. All right. And then she also says that Gordon is the nanny and the daddy because Gordon's on the payroll. I just don't understand how Jacqueline can say that Gordon spoils Mia and takes care of Mia and does everything for Mia. 
And at the same time, he's on the payroll. Because remember, this is prompting from Mia. Mia's saying, oh, you know, but I'm taking care of him. I'm doing things for him. Where are you getting this money from, Mia? The franchise that he owned, that he puts you in charge of, he puts you in a position? So maybe that's why you feel obligated to take care of him, not just because you feel sorry for him? Come on now. Like, you think we're dumb, but we're not. Where are you getting this money from, Mia? Where are you getting this money from? Just asking. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Speaking of Giselle Bryant, so we do get a little bit of a scene of Giselle celebrating her daughters, her twins, cap and gown ceremony. Pastor Jamal Bryant was also there. See, I corrected myself. He was also there. So they show a little bit of that. And I have to say, when Giselle was making her speech, you could tell Giselle's just trying. Giselle just has this hard exterior that she will not let anyone see her be emotional. Like, we've seen it some moments, like, with her daughters. But even in front of that crowd of family, she could not... You, just a hard exterior. And one of the best things about Giselle on the show is seeing her interact with her daughters. And I love the flashbacks of, of seeing her with her daughters when her daughters would make fun of her or they're having a good time. And then the flashbacks with Giselle's late father, they, they showed some of that. Very sweet moment. It's the best part of Giselle on the show is seeing her be a mom. And she's like, you know, I did that. I did an amazing job. And I'm not going to take that away from Giselle. She did do an amazing job with those, those young ladies. So congratulations to Giselle. This, this is Giselle's rebrand this season, but some of us are not falling for it. And it's not that. Here's the thing, because I know the Giselle fans. Yes, there are some. will be like, why can't Giselle be a better person this season? We all want Giselle to be a better person, but we clearly see what people are doing in editing. They want uh, they want to force us to believe that she's changed instead of actually seeing her change. And I want to see how this uh, how long this will last. I want to see how long this will last because people always show these true colors. Okay. So the um, Giselle celebrating her twins and their cap and gown ceremony, beautiful moment. Then we get to Wendy's breakfast, birth, birth, birthday breakfast. And this was a moment. I don't know about you guys, but this was definitely a moment because there's so many things that happen within this birthday breakfast. And Wendy's just there. It's my birthday. Wendy was lit. I didn't realize until the second time I watched it that Wendy was lit. But I appreciate Wendy coming in and calling out Mia, Ashley's, and who was else? Uh, Jacqueline's hypocrisy. And keeping people accountable. Like how, Jacqueline, how are you coming for for this, for, for Kiarna when Mia's the one who's bringing up people's past? Okay, we will get there in a second. So Mia says, you know, guys, I'm going to take you to Dr. McDaddy's. And they're like, McDaddy's? Who's McDaddy? But did you guys pay attention to Jassy's face? When, when she said that, you know, I'm going to take you to these, the first doctor's office that I opened up. Jassy's face said a lot to me. Jassy is not really friends with Mia. Jassy's not really friends with Mia. Or if they were friends, they were friendly. And they may have met, but they're not friends. Because Jassy's face, because Jassy's already, I think, vibing with people like Stacy and Kiarna. Like, she's not even hanging out with Mia. She's not even in, in those conversations with Mia. She's over there. She's like, you're taking us to the your uh, doctor's office that you open, and his name is Dr. McDaddy. Okay, all right. Giselle then FaceTimes Dr. Wendy in, in between the breakfast to, to wish her a happy birthday and let her know that she's on her way. Fine. <laughs> Look, fine. You guys that want to believe it, woo, 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 believe it. I'm not falling for it. This is my review. I'm going to let you know I don't believe it. But I'm here for the peace. <laughs> Look, I'm here for the peace. I am not a person that likes war. All right? Unless you bring it to me. Mm. Just saying. So she FaceTimes Wendy, to, and Wendy asks about... It. See, but I believe Wendy, when she's like, you know, how was your daughter's cap and gown thing? Fine. And then Karen says, you guys have come a long way. And then Wendy's like, haven't we? Okay. <laughs> All right. Jacqueline talks about people being bitter, and then Mia weighs in, and she's like, you mean like a bitter old B-word? And then Stacy, this was so out of pocket. Stacy's like, are you talking about Karen? Stacy, what do you mean? Why are we talking about how did look? It could be editing, but like, how do we get from bitter OB to are you talking about Karen? <laughs> Jacqueline, I mean, Stacy, oh, how 
how did we get there? Okay, fine. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I really do. I really do love me some Stacy. I don't care what anyone says. Stacy is exactly what we needed. She's a good buffer. She is the Cynthia Bailey of of Ralph's Wise of Potomac. She is. She has personality. She has her own personal storyline. She's not letting these women lead her to be anything but herself. I literally said on Twitter last night. I feel like. As a newbie, she's reminding me of Jennifer from from Real Housewives of Orange County. She's just genuinely who she is, and she's bringing it this season. Andy Cohen, a Watch What Happens Live last night, said he really likes Stacey. And I was like, okay, so she's getting the approval of the network. And he talked about how she's so authentic at home. Mind you, Andy probably don't like you, Mia. Just saying. Rashawn, thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate the support, guys. You can also support just by liking the video. Rashawn says, Kemp, how do you feel about the to be continued every week? Personally, I find it annoying and lazy. <laughs> I didn't even notice the to be continued uh, this week. But thank you for bringing that. I don't know. For me, I'm like every episode is like a to be continued. It's not a big deal to me, but I get it. Some of you don't like that. Lulu, thank you so much for the super chat. Lulu says, Ink and me are still following each other on IG. So what was that people were saying on, on social media? They were looking it up and saying that, look, they've unfollowed each other. Did they start following each other again? It wouldn't shock me that they did. It wouldn't shock me that they did. But le- thank you for the update, Lulu. And the super chat. Shan, thank you so much for the super chat. Jan- Shan says, Giselle with her daughters is my favorite. I think we all can agree with that. That's like her most authentic self and sweetest self. Shan, thank you for another super chat. Uh, Shan says, the birthday breakfast was hilarious. Wendy telling Ashley to shut up took me out. I mean, it was it was the best. I appreciated Dr. Wendy in that moment. I really did. Because I was like, we needed somebody to check. some. Like, she was fact-checking all of them in that moment. Like, co- like happy birthday, Dr. Wendy Estefo, because you really delivered in that moment. When you could just be sitting there enjoying your birthday, you were checking people. And I was like, yes, come on, fact-checker. <laughs> Look. Just fact checking everybody. Okay. So uh, Kiarna then decides to defend uh, Karen, which I can appreciate because look, there was a little bit of a pile on when it comes to Karen and, and her situation. So Kiarna says, like, I think that, that you need to give Karen a break this morning. Okay. And then it turns into a Kiarna versus Mia fight. And Mia keeps saying, remember, she put Kiana in the, the monk bunk beds with Stacey, being a mean girl, saying that, that this is girlfriend's boot camp. And so she brings that up again at the breakfast table and saying, like, you know, Karen's proud of me. You know, I've, le- I've learned from the best. You know, I got my flu. We're working on getting you one. Kiana checked her and was like, girl, I don't, I, you needed a flute. I didn't need a flute. And I interpreted Kiana saying that Meaning that she's like, I've got my own business. I got my own life. I got my own man that's got his own business. You, living off of Gordon, you lost all of that and now need this check. And I was like, yes, Kiana. <laughs> yes, get her. Because look, we we said it from the beginning when they were doing the room assignments and they put Kiana and Stacy in there. And she's like, is this girlfriend's boot camp? Mean girl behavior, trying to trying to haze these girls, thinking that that's what you're supposed to do on this show. So the minute that Kiana gave her a little bit of a pushback, she's like, um, what about your drug dealer boyfriend? And she's like, my what? And then Ashley and, and herself decides to chime in. Well, I did hear, you know, the word on the street was that you had, I don't know if it's your current boyfriend, but you had, like, I feel like these women especially in this day and age of reality television and Real Housewives, they end up digging up information on these other, like the newbies that come on the show. Okay? And I'm like, because Ashley, like, where did you hear that information from? I think you were looking for that information. So she wanted to have a moment, Ashley, and be like, well, we did hear that you did have a boyfriend that was a drug dealer. And Kiana had to correct them, like, my current boyfriend is this, this, and this. She's like, but what, did you date one in the past? So it turns into the, like, because I don't know how Mia feels as if a stripper is better than, <laughs> like, I, I mean, like, I don't know. In her mind, whatever. Kiana's like, you, you went to the streets, too. Fine. Mia says she didn't have to go to the streets. Okay, she's a self-made millionaire. 
She is not a millionaire, y'all. Do not believe anything that comes out of her mouth. And then Mia goes to this place, and Wendy calls her out. She's like, that is pretty low. She refers to Kiana as stitches, because you know Kiana got stitches on her forehead from the incident with Deborah. Okay? And then when Jacqueline says, you know, uh, we shouldn't harp on people's past in regards to Mia's stripper past. So Wendy has to check her. She's like, Mia's the one who brought this up. <laughs> And then Jacqueline looked, sitting there looking dumb, like, oh, she did? Yes, Mia's the one who brought up the drug dealer. (laughs) Okay? And then Ashley, and I don't know how we got to this place. No one does. (laughs) No one does. Ashley then turns to Kiarna. Did you have a scar on your forehead? And Kiarna's like, don't ask me that. Don't ask me that. And I know some people are confused as to why Kiana had the reaction that she had in regards to Ashley. First of all, Ashley and Kiana are not friends. And I feel like Kiana probably was not triggered. Because, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, she was triggered because of the incident. No, we have to remember, Deborah's facing actual charges and Kiana is suing Deborah. So Deborah's friend or ex-friend, Ashley, asking on camera, oh, as if there's no scar. I felt like it was a dig, a microaggression, meaning like, oh, you're suing and you don't even have a scar on your forehead. Even though Jassy came to to Kiana's defense, she's like, you can see the scar. The, the, the scar is there. You, like, you, you're you right there. <laughs> so Ashley tries to clean it up. She tries to clean it up in her confession. I was like, well, she was talking about her makeup line and this and that. And I thought maybe she got rid of the scar with the make her skincare line or something like that. Ashley was doing what Ashley normally does. Ashley is... I know a lot of people like to say Ashley's messy. No, Ashley is dangerous. Because some of the things that she's, quote, messy with has real-life ramifications. And I think Kiana got upset because this is a legal situation and now you're trying to say on camera you don't see a scar. She's like, don't ask me about my scar. And also, it was so random and out of place. It was like, where... Why are you asking me about my scar in this moment? Are you trying to have a moment? Could Kiana have played it off a little bit better? Yeah, but she was annoyed. God only knows what Kiana felt in that moment. I'm assuming that Kiana was like, you know I have litigation with this woman, and you want to make it seem as if the scar isn't there, that the scar didn't happen, that I'm exaggerating the scar. Homegirl got stitches. You heard what Mia just said? Anyways, Karen decides to be messy. Yeah, because all of these women are working overtime at this breakfast table. There were so many issues that came up. So many issues. So Karen says, can I be messy for a moment? Look, can I be messy for a moment? Okay, Karen, here we go. Karen says, she asked about Mr. PP. You know, Mr. PP's Jacqueline's on again, off again, baby's father, whatever. And she brings up his 25 convictions. Anyone else go like, wait, what? What, 25 convictions? Who, what, where? So very much like what Mia said the night before, Karen was on her phone looking up information on people. And she brings up her baby's father, Jacqueline's baby father's 25 convictions. Apparently, according to Jacqueline, she says they weren't criminal offenses. He worked for a racist precinct at the time, and he still is working as a police officer, but at another place. Okay, here's the thing. I get it. Karen is like, I need to come for this woman. I I keep telling you guys, I feel like Karen coming for Jacqueline, although Jacqueline was messy in in bringing this up and even sharing this information with Mia. However, I do feel like Karen is doing a lot for what Jacqueline did. And now I will say this. Get something on Jacqueline. Why are you bringing up Jacqueline's baby's father? That's not a good look for him. Let's talk about the real life ramifications. Because... You're coming for, you You think you're coming for her, but you're actually coming for someone that has nothing to do with the show. Yes, he was on the show or whatever, but he's not involved. And now you've, you brought up his whatever. I'm, I'm sure wherever he's working now knows about those 25 whatever. But you decided to bring this up against her, but it's really against him. It doesn't really hurt her. I know Mia says that, you know, she defends that man. They've been through a lot. They go on again. Look, Jacqueline's choice of men, whatever, okay. But if it felt just unwarranted, it felt over the top. Because again, that had nothing to do with Jacqueline. It had to do with her, her children's father. Just saying, 
But I guess some people are like, you know, you come for me, everyone get, gets it. I don't believe, I don't believe that's right. I don't believe that's right at all. But according, according to Jacqueline, she says he worked for a racist, a racist police, police department. And that's why. Look, all of that's possible. All that's possible. And the fact that he's still able to work as a police officer says to me that whatever charges that he received probably weren't legitimate because would another police department hire him with 25, especially as a black man with 25 uh, other charges? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. But who knows? Who knows? Anyways, someone says, hey, Pink Dynamite says, Team Karen, you better be Team you. You don't know these people. Because <laughs> once, once, once her charges get finalized, you might not be t- so Team Karen. Just saying. Because I'm not, I, look, I'm not going to forget what Karen potentially did. And then we found out in this episode that Karen possibly did this three years before. Just saying. Angela says, hold on. Ooh. Hold on, hold on. Where am I? I'm, I'm missing. All right, I'm just going to have to keep going. All right. Let me see. Exactly. Theo says, I'm team myself all day. Just saying. Let me see. Deborah says, how do we know that he's employed by another police department? That's what Jacqueline said. I'm going by what Jacqueline said. Okay. I do know that. Sheena says, unfortunately, police officers can get hired in different districts, even with a bad record. We will have to wait and see. But again, we're talking about PP. We're not talking about Jacqueline. And I feel like that is, like, he's not a part of this show in that way. So to bring that up feels unwarranted, feels excessively mean. And if he does end up losing his job, that affects her kids too. Like, that's, we could be, we could be fans of Karen, but... Let's talk about stuff that's in real life. Just saying. Ronnie says, I love Karen before, but she's becoming unhinged this season. So, all right. Moving on. Moving, moving on. Let me see. What else did I want to talk about in this scene? Uh, Kiarna. Kiarna has a side conversation with Jassy. She has a side conversation. This is why I'm saying that Jassy and Mia's relationship doesn't feel as as tight because it seems like she's really building a relationship with the other women like Kiana and Stacy. So Kiana makes this comment about uh, Mia throwing about her face. She's like, you're talking about my face, but your, your face looks like the rocks have been thrown at. And Jassy's like, what, wait, what did you say? So look at, look at Jassy's face. Jassy's alignment or friendship with Mia is, is, is if anything, it's, it's short lived. It's short lived. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Which just says, Karen's been mad cranky all season. Uh, Lavender says, they do it to Karen too, though. I'm okay. Stefan says, Karen needs to stop talking about the husband as soon as someone mentions Ray. Karen wants to apologize, apologize made, made to her man. This is true. Um, Shay says, the rock comment was funny. Lord. Yeah, Jassy had to hear it again. She's like, wait, what did you say? What did you say? Okay. I was like, oh. Okay. I mean, look, you want to call someone stitches? I'm just saying. Okay. Tiffany says, well, Karen can lose can lose hers too. By Jacqueline saying Karen was drunk, knowing that she's that she what she's going through in regards to Jacqueline. Well, that that's the thing. If Jacqueline had said Karen was driving and drunk, no, she said she called her and she sounded tipsy. Mia's the one who said that Karen was drunk. There's a there there is a difference. As someone that doesn't drink, I do know there's a difference between drunk and being tipsy. <laughs> Dina says, "I wish someone would tell Mia she's not that girl." Yeah, <laughs> look, yeah. I want you to ask the question. She says, "Does Jazzy have a husband, a business?" Well, remember she's a friend of, so they're not going to highlight that. But they did talk about her boyfriend. Her boyfriend is what, on the Kansas Chiefs. Remember? So, all right. Amit says, "Mia is the Heather Gay of Potomac." She is. Everyone is self-producing, though. Everyone is self-producing. All right, let's move on because there's more to talk about, guys. And if you're a member of the channel, we're going to drop the call-in for you, call in link for you guys first. So let me actually drop that while I'm thinking before we get into the next couple of stuff. Hold on. All right, let me drop this first. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video. We will drop the call-in link for the live audience once we get to a certain number of likes. We have over a 1,000 of you watching, so why haven't you liked the video yet? Oh, so you hear the hate outside the club? Okay, understood. Look, understood. 
Look, understood. Guys, don't forget, I will be coming to Los Angeles on November 20th for the Kempire After Dark a live experience. Go get your tickets today for, for that show. Then, London, we're coming there December 8th. I hear a lot of people that are getting tickets. They're coming to London. Go get your tickets now. More information on that and our DC show are available in the description, along with more information about everything Kempire and our Sponsor for today, Uncommon Goods. All right, if you're a member of the channel, we've dropped the calling link for you on the community tab. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Tequila Girl says, Woo, 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 sorry, Kemper, I will miss you in LA traveling. Hopefully, you'll, you'll come back and I will uh, watch then Scorpio's Rule. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, you guys are still going in on Mia, so I'm going to move on. <laughs> oh, damn. K. Avery says, Jassy's boyfriend put his page on private after the first episode aired. Really? Wow. Deborah says, I got my tickets to L.A. Do you? Do you guys? I'm just saying. All right, let's move on. Let's move on, because I'm tired of talking about, about Mia. I'm tired of talking about Karen. All right, but speaking of Karen, we got to talk more about it. Karen talks with Wendy and Stacy because everyone dispersed after the birthday breakfast. And again, I have to give Wendy Wendy credit because in that moment, she was checking everybody when they were lying or being hypocritical. There was even a moment between Wendy and Ash and she was just like, shut up. <laughs> and honestly, I do think that Wendy, Wendy was a little bit lit. Was Wendy tipsy? Maybe. <laughs> look, look, maybe, but there definitely, there definitely was a lot of uh, Wendy in that moment just checking everybody. Like, you're wrong, you're hypocritical, and I, I appreciated it. I was like, yes, we needed this, because no one else was doing it. Hey, Taria, thank you so much for the super chat. Guys, if you missed it, I did stop by Taria's podcast and YouTube channel last week. Was it last week? Yeah, so we talked about everything in pop culture, so be sure to check that out. <laughs> Taria says, emergency breakthrough. We talked about that on her podcast. Karen out here fighting for her life and Mia talking about the streets when her life is looking like a five, five miles of bad road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is why it's so difficult. Because look, I think Mia's wrong, but I also think Karen's not innocent. That's why it's so hard to even talk about any of it. Because I, I think... I think Karen is deflecting from her own issues. And yes, we know people have dragged Karen over the years. But again, I'm not going to defend Karen and her driving drunk and then finding out in this episode that she drove drunk just three years ago. I'm not defending that behavior. No matter what you guys want to say, you're team Karen. You could be team whoever you want. I'm team not a drunk driver. But I'm also not team Mia. <laughs> and this is why I tell you not to be team anyone. Oh, sorry, y'all. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Pastor, the TikTok you can't can't see behind your water bottle. Sorry, y'all. All right. Anyways, anyways. So Karen has a conversation with Wendy, Jassy, and Stacy, and she says, "We are better than this." See, see, Karen likes to play in y'all faces. She'll come out and be messy, and then she's like, "But we are better than this." She's like, "I bring facts. I don't. I don't talk about rumors." Again, I got to call Karen out when she's incorrect. Because, we, look, say what you want. We've said it all about regular Robin. But she came to us with those rumors. Y'all remember the rumors with, with Juan? I mean, they ended up being some, somewhat true. <laughs> look, somewhat true. But those were rumors. They, those weren't facts. Just saying. So she's like, you know, she's, she's like, this is, the, you know, a lesson in, in being on this show. Basically, they're breaking the fourth wall. They're breaking the fourth wall. So Wendy's like, yeah, this is a grand dame um, a class. <laughs> okay. All right. So Ashley, Mia, and Jacqueline have their own little powwow in Mia's room, and they start going through Karen's charges. So apparently Mia has screenshots of those charges, and they're going through them. All right? Mia says that she thinks that Karen should just own it, and we've said that too. I think Karen's case would be, she'd be moving on with this case if she had just said, you know what? I did I did the things. Let's just get over this. That way I can show accountability on this show. But no, she's fighting the case. And apparently this case is coming up in December. But again, I know it's Mia. <laughs> and Mia Mia's intentions aren't for for the for the good. We know that. But I do agree that 
Karen should have just owned it so that she could move forward. Because the evidence against Karen, which we've gone over for those that haven't heard, we've gone over. She tried to have this case dismissed. She tried to also have evidence suppressed. And the judge, this happened in July, the judge said no. We're not going to suppress that evidence. And no, the questions that were asked of you during during that were legal. Just saying. All right. Let's move on. So then Stacy comes into the room and she's just like, Mia's just like, well, this is what you're defending. Look, look at the the charges. This is what you're defending. Then I didn't expect this to, to come out of the conversation. Mia says, we we told uh, we need to take. We need to take Karen to rehab. Stacy's like, what? Take Karen to rehab? I don't know where that came from. I don't remember. I don't know if there was an edit. I don't know if they left something out. However, <laughs> I'm like, when did that happen? And when did Karen admit to wanting to go to rehab? Because that was an element that Stacy brings up when she brings the information to Karen. I was like, wait. Was that a bad edit that we just didn't see or hear that part of the conversation? We did hear Karen, we did hear Mia say that, yes, we need to take her to rehab. I was confused. Belisha says, just like Shannon Bedore, they try to fight, they try to fight her case and ended up coming to a probation agreement. Hey, Chastity. Chastity says, I'll be seeing Kim Pyre this month in LA. Can't wait to meet all of you. It's going to be a fun show. It's going to be a fun show. <laughs> Miss Esquire says, team right is right and wrong. It, wait, wait, team right, wait. Team right is right and wrong. And wrong over here. <laughs> thank you, Miss Esquire, for the super chat. Alexis says, thank you for the super chat, Alexis. Alexis says, I wonder if Robin would be better at holding Karen accountable. I'm honestly not sure, but I can't, I can't, you mean I can't with Mia? Ready to see Karen and Stacy talk. So that's how the episode ends because Stacey, after having the conversation with Mia, goes to Karen. She's like, Karen, we need to have a conversation. And she says, first of all, Karen, Stacey very much like all of us. So like, I, I, I'm going to always defend you, Karen, because I know who you really are. But these citations and screenshots are pretty, pretty damning. Pretty damning. Karen, though, is like, well, you know, the citations and all that information are public knowledge. So she's fine with them having screenshots of the citations. We all knew about the citations. But she says, I'm a little concerned because Mia's saying that uh, we need to take you to rehab and that you wanted to wanted their help. Again, this is Mia. So Mia could have said that and it just wasn't included. And Mia does lie a lot. So I'm wondering if that was just cut out of the scene for time's sake or intentionally. I don't know. Ooh, Jean says Karen is for Karen. Tread lightly, Stacy. Mm. <laughs> Look, I appreciate. Here's the thing: I appreciate some of the women defending Karen in this moment. Are they defending her because she's a fan favorite? These these are elements we have to think about when talking about this show. Or are they defending her because, like, okay, guys, we get it. She drove under the influence, possibly. She's facing the charges. We can lay off of her. We do, it doesn't have to be your storyline. Like, we don't have to constantly talk about it. And then also bring up something that happened from three years ago. I'm glad I'm I'm kind of glad it came up because it kind of makes us look at Karen again. Like, so this is something that you've done before. And let's be honest, if you've gotten caught with the DUI, I have a feeling it, it definitely wasn't your first time. And we know it wasn't her first time driving under the influence. You just weren't caught. Just saying. And that's and that's why I'm not going to sit here. Stacey can just sit there and defend Karen because she knows Karen in real life. But based on what we know and what Karen did on that night, we can't forget or make a light that she could have harmed herself or anyone else that was on the road. And I know now she's saying that in interviews, but Karen, the way that things have been playing out this season, it, it feels like you're not. It feels like now that people are seeing the episodes and reacting, you're sort of changing your tune. Bianca, thank you so much for the super chat. Bianca says, Kay turning to, to Jacqueline to ask, are you okay? Kiarna, are you okay? <laughs> I, I mean, that seems to be her thing. She said it in the kitchen too, Kiarna. She says she really just be in the clouds, checked out and waking up only to ask dumb as hell questions <laughs> and missing and missing out. Kiarna looked over and said, are you okay? 
<laughs> that was funny. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca, for the super chat. Guys, you can like the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting not just my channel, but other channels as well. We got almost 2,000 of you on YouTube alone. So why are we not at almost 1,000 likes? Let's get to 750 likes, and I will drop the call link for the general audience. But if you're a member of the channel, well, the members have filled up the backstage. Members, we did post the link on the community tab for those for the, the members. You, it's not a part of the perks of being a member, but it's one of the bonuses that we give you. Become a member today at teamcampire.com backslash join. I will say, Kiana did make me laugh when she said, are you okay? Are you okay? No, she's not. So, honestly, Stacy though, too, Kiarna, Jassy, and Stacy have me, I'm like, these are a solid addition to Potomac. But Stacy, when they were talking about Mia being a stripper and Stacy reacting to this conversation, she's just like, what is happening here? There was stripper and drug dealing. And she's like, oh, but, but Mia was a stripper, right? And then she, her reaction to me was hilarious. I think Stacy is, is here to stay. But Stacy, I said this last week. Someone sent this to Stacy. You should be on TikTok selling stuff like Teresa, but you actually do this selling stuff for QVC. I'm trying to get you another job. <laughs> Not that you need one. Maybe the, the divorce settlement's going to have you sitting pretty, but you're so good at it. I want to see you on TikTok because TikTok is like the new QVC. <laughs> I want to see you on TikTok selling these Christmas trees and lights and, and knickknacks from QVC. Come on, Stacy, get on it. You don't even need to work for QVC. You just got to have a TikTok account. <laughs> Why am I trying to give Stacy more work? Because I think she'd be great at it. Stacy, can we do a look? Can we do an interview? Look, look, look. And uh, no, I don't want to talk about Potomac. I want to pretend like you're training me to, to be a QVC presenter. And maybe you'll bring TJ. Stacey, you want to come to the show? <laughs> I'm being, I'm kidding. The Kempire After Dark Alive experience is, is a safe space so that you guys can talk to talk those things about the Bravo celebrities and the celebrities that you know and love and, and, without feeling like, oh my God, I can't say anything bad because that person's here. So it really isn't, it's really not for you guys. It's for us. It's for us to meet and greet and all that good stuff. So don't forget, I will be coming to LA on November 20th. Then I'll be in London December 8th. And then we're coming back to Potomac. No, not Potomac. Washington, D.C., near Potomac um, on January 24th. Get your tickets today. More information on that and everything Empire is available in the description. Okay? Britt says that Jassy and Kiana would be good on RHOA, but they're, you know, they live in Potomac. I, I like things that are natural. All right? Exactly. Ashley says, Stacey is securing next season for sure. She knows how to sell it for TV. Okay? Wait, Adrian says, I'm kind of mad for what she did to the tree. Really, really, Karen, sober up. Oh, you mean the tree tree? I was like, wait, what? the Christmas tree? Oh, you're talking about the accident. Oh. <laughs> I mean, no. Save all the trees. Just saying. And the deer. Uh, Karen said there wasn't a deer. Karen said there wasn't a deer. Damn, I've been talking for like, how long have I been talking? Over an hour. My voice needs a, mo a moment. So we're, gonna, we're going to get to some callers. Live chat, let's get to 750 likes. I'll drop the call-in link for the general audience, but we're going to take calls from our members first, okay? Uh, you know it. Miss Mel imagine, come on. Miss Mel says, Kem, Kem, would you hit, wait, would you hit is Stacy's man? Wait, you hit on Stacy's man? If he hit on me? No. <laughs> I don't date people in the class. <laughs> Shut up. Goodbye. See, never mind. Move on, moving on, moving on. Thanks for tuning in to Kempire here on the Kempire Radio Podcast. As always, don't forget to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. And for everything Kempire Radio, head on over to KempireRadio.com.